Early voting is underway, and whenever you turn on the TV or get online, you see political attack ads that are basically running nonstop right now. Yeah, we're looking into the accuracy of the claims that those ads make. Local 12's Jane Pilcher, he did some digging about the latest round of ads that you're seeing in the race between Congressman Steve Shabbat and challenger Kate Schroeder. But Shabbat paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for web consulting. Indeed. Shabbat spent $150,000 for web consulting during his last successful run for Congress per his campaign finance documents. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee created this 30-second spot. Officials there say a similar website should cost no more than $8,400 a year. After some research, I found online sites that will give you fairly slick looking websites for between $2,400 and $70 to $200 a year, not counting the cost of online hosting. And a local marketing firm tells me a top notch website runs between $2,000 and $10,000 a year. But the real thrust of the ad is who Shabbat's campaign paid to his son-in-law. Indeed, Shabbat's campaign paid his son-in-law's firm to create his campaign website per finance records. But the Federal Elections Commission investigated a complaint about the spending two years ago during the previous congressional campaign against Aftab Purival. The agency found no wrongdoing. So we find this statement partially misleading. Kate Schroeder and her allies are just rehashing the same debunked attacks that Aftab tried to use in, the, in his failed campaign last go around. The spot also references an ongoing federal investigation into Shabbat's former campaign manager, James Schwartz Jr. He's suspected in the disappearance of $120,000 in campaign funds. We find that part true. What the ad doesn't mention is a letter sent earlier this summer from the FBI stating the campaign was the victim of a crime. Schroeder's campaign had to change an ad saying Shabbat was the target of an FBI investigation earlier this year. And it does not clearly differentiate between the FBI issue and the website controversy, two subjects that appear unrelated. So we rule that part of the DCCC ad somewhat misleading. Now on to the other side. This ad from Club for Growth attacks Democrat challenger Kate Schroeder. It takes a special kind of politician to raise taxes in a pandemic like Kate Schroeder. The ad refers to Issue 7, a Hamilton County tax measure on the ballot in late April. The audio states that the ballot initiative raised taxes nearly a full percent, but the rising red arrow on the video makes it appear that the tax increase was 7.8 percent. Hamilton County voters approved Issue 7 by fewer than 1,000 votes in late April. But the measure also lowered the city earnings tax rate by 0.3%. We find this to be somewhat misleading. It's meant to, you know, lead people to think that Kate Schroeder somehow was responsible for a massive tax hike. First of all, she wasn't responsible for, for the voters of Hamilton County were. Voters of Hamilton County approved this. The ad also calls her a liberal for endorsing the measure. Issue 7 got broad bipartisan support. That included endorsements from several prominent area Republicans and business leaders, as well as Democrats. The ad truthfully states the issue gives Hamilton County the highest sales tax in Ohio. We find that partially misleading. But it goes on to say that the sales tax applies to personal protective equipment such as masks and sanitizers. We checked with Hamilton County and other tax experts. All medical goods are exempt from sales tax in Ohio. Hand sanitizer and masks bought at retail outlets like Kroger are taxable. So that claim is partially true. James Pilcher, Local 12 News. Steve